Good evening. Good evening. We want to welcome everyone to the Merritt College Firefighter One Academy graduation. That's my work phone going off right now. I apologize. I'm going to turn it off right now. Graduations are wonderful events, aren't they? Yes. Family, friends, right? Everyone's looking good, feeling good, smelling good. And uh, we come to these kind of events to celebrate the accomplishments of our, of our family and friends, right? The hard work that is uh, expended to reach a goal. And uh, no graduations are quite as special as fire department related graduations because the hard work that's required literally involves blood, sweat, and tears. And uh, the graduates to today have uh, met a milestone, a very large milestone that's getting them closer to their goal. Uh, for a lifetime of service in this career. And so for that, we're here to celebrate them and to support them and to congratulate them. So we're glad that you all are here to do that and we appreciate you coming this evening. So thank you for your presence. Uh, as was mentioned, this is the Merritt College Firefighter One Academy. And so uh, we'd like to really, um, before we get started into this program, really show our appreciation to Merritt College and what they have done to further this uh, educational process and really back this program. So this time I'd like to invite up Dr. Marie Elaine Burns, the president of Merritt College. Good evening. On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administrators, welcome to Merritt College. Um, in addition to the welcome, I want to just say a couple words about our well, I look at everybody as our students, as our students, your children, your family members. And the first thing is, I want to thank all of you, because without you, many of them would not have made it. They wouldn't have made it without that kind word, with the patience, with that urging and pushing, you know how it is sometimes, with that kick them out of bed and the whole nine yards, that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> but also because you inspire them in other ways. They, wanna, they want family members and friends and partners and spouses, et cetera, to feel proud of them. Um, <clears throat> they want their children to be proud, brothers and sisters, and that inspires them to keep, continue going. So before we go on and uh, applaud our graduates, give yourself a hand for supporting these, at this point, it's young men. <laughs> Because without you, without your support, without your harsh words sometimes, without your kind words, they wouldn't have made it all the way through. And that's really important. Family and friends are so important for many of our students to cause them to stay, to cause them to want to do better. So thank you for that. To, for the, our graduates, um, it was already mentioned that they've been through blood, sweat, and tears, literally, and I think they might show you some some of that they do at the police academy. They even show them getting tased and the whole nine yards. Um, the work they have to go through to prepare to keep us safe and out of harm's way. The one thing I love about, there's several things, but one of the major things I love about Merritt College is what I tell people is Merritt put the community, puts the community in community college because much of what we do here is not only teach our students subject matter, but also to remember where they come from, to remember to give back to the community, and what better way than being a firefighter? You put your life on the line for those you care about, your family and your community. And so we teach those, those characteristics, those traits that help people realize you're not here by yourself, you're not gonna get, you know, go anywhere by yourself, but you also have to remember where you came from and pull someone forward. So those are the characteristics that you also want in a firefighter, someone who really cares about his community, and I'm saying his right now because I didn't see any females in the, in the lineup back there. Um, not that there, are there three? I didn't see any, I didn't see them when I went back. They didn't let me go all the way out the door. So his or her, to those family members, so you won't, don't want to offend anyone. Um, so it's really important 
that we train our students to not only do a, a very good job at what they're doing, but also they have the character and the traits that folks in the community, uh, little people are looking up to, so that they want to say, I want to be a firefighter, not because I just want to try to deal with that hose or climb that ladder, but because this is a person of integrity. And I know that the, the folks that have trained our students teach them that. So that's really important. They build off what you've taught them. So that's really great. To them, I want to say congratulations. You did it. This was not an easy job. And so they know, based on their training, they're ready. They're ready to go out. They're ready to do good things in the community. And they can even go further. They can get promoted up the ladder. If they continue to dig down deep and pull out all of that strength that you've helped them build, that our instructors have helped them build, that Merritt College has helped them build. So with that, I want to say congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to our graduates. We look forward to them um, <clears throat> getting their uh, certificates this evening. And I hope you have a great evening and celebrate with them, because they have gone through hell to get to this point. You know, every ship, every ship has a captain, right? And this ship has a captain. Uh, some of you know him, so maybe some of you do not. But Captain Sean, uh, Captain Sean Gasset <clears throat> is the Academy Director. It's really um, his passion for this project that keeps this, this ship afloat. And the, uh, the countless hours that he puts in and his dedication to this class of students, which is the sixth and the fifth and the fourth, the second, the first, and all the many that come after, really it's, it's his hard work that keeps this thing uh, driving. So this time I'd like to introduce to you uh, Captain Sean Gasset. Thank you guys for coming. It's a really important night for not only for our academy, not for Merritt College, Oakland Fire, Alameda County Fire, but especially for these 17 that have put in an extensive 18 weeks. Uh, we spoke a little earlier, and uh, I wanted to say in front of you, as I spoke to them earlier, and they wondered, but I am very, very proud of you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this makes our sixth annual uh, graduation for our cadets. My, like you said, my name is Sean Gasset. I'm truly glad and truly blessed to be the director of this program. Uh, I've been with the city of Oakland for 20, going on 21 years now, born and raised here on the East End. Proud of that. So, but we are extremely proud of our cadets for their hard work and their dedication and all the work that they put towards completing their Firefighter One Academy, so let's definitely give them one more. All right, so let me, let me quickly describe what, what a Firefighter One Academy does. A Firefighter One Academy helps to develop a solid foundation towards a career in firefighting. Through book work and, and hands-on training, they help to educate our cadets on a variety of topics, fire suppression, EMS, hazardous material, confined space, uh, fire prevention, fire communications, fire behavior, ventilation, forcible entry. I mean, it, it's, it's endless because when, everything, when anything goes wrong and you get out 911, we're coming and you expect us to have the answer. So this academy helped to set the foundation for these individuals and we take that very, very seriously. Let's see, and uh, but like I said, I believe that this academy is the first consistent example of the type of mindset and work ethic that is expected of an individual in the fire service. This is why we're so tough on them. They can tell you that. This is why we demand excellence. We don't do average here. That's the model that we came up with. I'm gonna I'm a patent that and make some shirts. But uh, we don't do average. Average you can find somewhere else. All right? uh, but it seems to be working because we've had a good fortune of having over the last, this is our sixth academy, 31 of our cadets have been picked up by different fire departments and uh, within the last five years. So that in itself is a pretty good accomplishment. We're very, very proud of that. So I'm just gonna take the time to talk about a few other things that uh, we're really, really proud about this academy. And it's not just me. It's not just my doing. I put in a lot of time and effort, but so does the cadre. So do the cadets, so do our alumni, which I'll introduce you guys to later. And I know our families that support uh, our cadets during the academy, they can tell you I'm pretty sure they come home pretty tired. Some of you I recognize from the orientation, and I told you it was gonna be 
they were going to need you. They were going to need your support. They were going to need you to help them out when they get home tired and they're not able to do as much as they used to because they need to focus on this work, school work, phys the physicality of the academy, and everything that took its toll. So I definitely want to commend you and thank you for being there for them because without you, it would have been a, a lot tougher for them, that's for sure. Um, but to our academy, just a few things that have made us stand out um, that I'm very, very proud of. A few years ago, there was a documentary made about us called uh, In the Red. And it was made, made by uh, Mimi Sharikova. Mimi's not here tonight, I don't think, but uh, a lot goes out to her. She had a no budget film. She put up the money herself. And this film wound up being rated top 10 in the nation by Rescue One of all the fire uh, videos for the year of 2017. So that's saying something. <laughs> Very good, very good documentary. We debuted it at the Grand Lake Theater, had over 600 people in attendance. Um, really nice documentary. With that, we were able to do a, a set on um, a segment on NPR in which they talked about the film and everything like that. Um, and that was something else that added to just this foundational growth and people knowing about this academy. With that, the Department of Labor from Washington, D.C. came out and visited us two years ago, with the movie being one of the catalysts that generated that, uh, came out and spent a weekend with us. And after doing so, they rated us in the top five in the nation for uh, organizations and academies helping minorities become first responders. So we're very, very proud of that. <laughs> And then last year, we had uh, a visit. We got a phone call from Colorado Springs Fire Department. It was uh, their head man the manager from HR wanting to come and visit us and talk about how they can diversify their, their, uh, their department a little more in Colorado Springs. So they uh, looked up, looked us up, they Googled us, did all their little vetting and everything. They came out and spent the weekend with us came out, talked to our alumni, talked to the cadre. They were able to talk to our chief. They were able to talk to Alameda County's chief because they're the main supporters of this program besides Mayor College. And um, they stayed for the weekend and they were very, very surprised, not surprised, I'd say very, very excited about what we had going so much as to where we have partnered up with them. And um, this year, we've sent the first list of candidates from our academy and our alumni that are to participate in their hiring process this year. So they looked for us to have a list of candidates for them each year. That's what our agreement is. And so we had their fire chief, the deputy fire chief, and like I said, the human, uh, the human resources, head of human resources come out and sit with us and talk. And like they were extremely impressed. So this year will be our first list of, uh, I think, about eight candidates that are willing to go out there for their testing process. They're willing to help them out. Supposedly, we're going to see about room and board and things like that, but they understand that they really want our candidates, and they're really extending the uh, olive branch to really help us out. So I wanted that to be acknowledged because uh, hard work pays off. It's not just me. It's also here. It's also here. It's also our alumni, and it's also you. So it's something that's being good. And, and just happenstance, because I totally believe this program has been touched. Um, we have, of all places, somebody from Colorado Springs in this academy. You want to stand up? <laughs> totally, totally not planned, right? Just happens, but now we're able to, with the alliance that we've made, send him home pretty much with an occupation of fire, being a firefighter in Colorado Springs representing us. Now that's saying something. See, so. Uh, so, but we just, I also want to go on and mention everyone else that kind of keeps this rolling for us. Here at Merritt College, most definitely, um, this institution here has backed us for the last six years. And I definitely want to acknowledge the individuals here that at Merritt that keeps the wheels turning for us. So Dr. Uh, Joel Laguerre, the Chancellor of Merritt College, I didn't see him here, but he's, a, he's been a big stable of support for us. 
whenever we've needed him. Uh, you met the president, Dr. Marie Elaine Burns, president, and she's been, ever since we've been up here, been a, a, a cornerstone for us um, in, in helping us push this program forward. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Lamb also, he was, where Dr. Lamb, where yeah, I saw he was back here, the vice president um, of instruction here. Dr. Rick Ramos, he's a dean of allied health and public safety for us. And um, two instructors that we do here is retired o OFD Lieutenant Gil Cody, uh, one of our fire instructors, and also uh, Captain David Covington, who's still working in OFD, he's one of our instructors up here also. So, you hear me say OFD a lot. OFD is in the house, for sure, all right? One of our biggest advocates. It takes a lot to get this academy going, a lot of equipment, apparatus, tools. We need a drill tower. We need an educational facility, all this. It takes a lot. And because of that, Oakland Fire and Alameda County Fire Department has donated a lot to help this happen. We started out with borrowing turnouts and borrowing shoes and everything else to really make this and pull this off. And it's elevated and turned itself into what it has in, in, in a six short years. So that's why I'm really, really proud of this and really, really proud of us and proud of every, all the support that we've been given. So thank you. I want to introduce uh, uh, our fire chief, Darren White. Thank you so much for assisting us along the way. Definitely. We have Chief Melinda, uh, Deputy Chief Melinda Drake. She's not here. She's in charge of training of the training division where we train. So in coordination with her, we can be able to use our apparatus, tools and equipment and things like that and stay very late, right? <laughs> All right. Also, Deputy Chief Eric Logan, uh, Battalion Chief Yon McWhorter, and Battalion Chief Lisa Baker. They all, you know, it takes a lot of people to pull this off, um, whether it's with our scheduling at work and covering our shifts when we're on duty to be able to go teach. Um, we have to go chain of command still, and it goes up, and our chief has provided that for us. So these people are the inner workings to make sure that we're able to get down and give these people the instruction that they need, all of us. So. So thank you again for that, and thank you for all our chiefs. So like I said, not to play second fiddle, because they don't. They're right up there and paired with us. Alameda County Fire Department, Chief Rocha, I thought he was going to be here, but uh, I don't I'd be remiss not to mention how important it is and all the things that he does for us. From, the six year, from our very first year of inception, he's been on our team and, and, has our, and had our back so much as to where they donated a fire engine to us. So along with that and tools and equipment, things like that, he's usually, uh, whenever we need some stuff and we talk to him, their department, just as ours, has been very sufficient, I mean, yeah, very sufficient in helping us out, or efficient, I should say, either or, but in helping us out with whatever we need. So it's been a true blessing to have Alameda County as a partner in this too. But like I mentioned before, I was born and raised here in Oakland, and I'm lucky enough to serve the city that I so much love. So was, it, so was this gentleman that I'm about to introduce to you. He was also raised here in Oakland, originally worked at, as a firefighter at the Oakland airport until Oakland took over the airport, then he became an Oakland firefighter. He has been working very hard for the last several years, working his way up the ranks, and now holds the position of being the chief of the Oakland Fire Department. So it's my pleasure to introduce my chief, my fellow Oaklander, my friend, Chief Darren White. Good evening. I, I just, I, first of all, thank you for the introduction. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I'm really honored to be here with everyone this evening for the Bay EMT graduation. You've heard a lot of great things about the program, but I'm gonna just share a couple of things with you from my own personal perspective. Uh, as Captain Gasset indicated, I, I came up here in Oakland, predominantly on the east side, but also um, down near the Grand Ave Gene Street area. So I'm familiar with the entire city. But when I was coming up and trying to join the fire service, the only show in town was Chabot College and their, um, their uh, how should we say, cadet program, if you will. And so it was really called a Firefighter One program, but there was nothing here in my backyard that exists the way it does today. And don't get me wrong, I had great instructors. I had um, some memorable classmates, some great instruction, and I, it laid a good foundation for me. But I gotta tell you that the foundation that this cadre lays for each Bay EMT class, 
surpasses what I, I experienced coming up. And I felt like I was pretty lucky. But I got to tell you men and women, you guys are luckier than you can imagine. And I say that not just because they're from the Oakland Fire Department, but I know these individuals and I know the effort that they give to giving you all that they can to make you the best possible firefighter candidates and the best possible person that you could become. And so before I go into a, a lot more of what I'm going to say here, I want to just be sure that you understand that what they share with you, take it to heart. And I know full well people look at firefighters as heroes and they look at them for heroes predominantly because of what emergency responses and outcomes they have, such as rescues, such as um, EMS calls where they've turned the situation from bad to good. And these individuals seated to my right have all been involved in actual rescues and have actually saved lives. But that's not why I consider them heroes. By no means. That is not why I consider them to be heroes. And don't get me wrong, they are very heroic. I've seen them put themselves at great risk. But I think that they're heroes predominantly because they give back. And they give back without any compensation other than to see others do well and move forward in life to have the same opportunities that they've had and enjoyed. And for the, the Ms. Gasses, the Ms. Browns, the Ms. Smiths, the Ms. Hughes, the Ms. Jacksons, um, I have to special shout out and thank you to you because you guys are providing an avenue for multiple generations unforetold at this point who are going to have opportunities moving forward because these cadets will become eventual firefighters and they will have opportunities given to them that will help them generationally for decades to come that you guys can't even picture or imagine right now. And so you're sacrificing and, and allowing them to come out and give of what they give to these um, cadets and these individuals day in, day out, year in, year out. It, it takes a special person at home to be tolerant of that, to be supportive of that, but to really understand and embrace it to the same degree that these individuals do. And so that's the reason why I feel like they are heroes. And so if you want to emulate any of them, don't do it because of what emergency prowess they have. Do it because of what they've given each of you. Do it in such a way that you give back also. Each one of us had the great fortune of actually receiving from others coming before us. And so each of you will be charged with doing the same thing that's been done for you. And so the cycle will continue, and you will continue to make a difference in multiple lives generationally, much the way they're doing right now. That being said, I want to get on the podium and lecture right now, but I just wanted to, to make sure you understood how important and how lucky and fortunate you are. And I'm going to single one of you out just right now, um, just because it, it was news to me about Colorado Springs. I had the chance to actually interact with some of the staff from Colorado Springs, and I know full well they found a lot of value in this program, as did other agencies. Sean has only spoken to a few for the sake of brevity, but the end result is you have an opportunity here to bring something back to Colorado Springs or take from Colorado Springs and bring it to whatever agency you end up with here. Don't lose that. It's, it's something to, to behold. It's something to treasure. And because of that, this program could flourish elsewhere in part because of maybe what you contribute somewhere down the road. And so with that, um, good luck to you one way or the other, whether it's locally or in Colorado Springs. But I'm sure you do fine because you had a great foundation here. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Most of my message should be aimed at the cadets. But I want to say a word of thanks in advance to the family members and to those who are actually supporting these individuals as they begin their journey in the fire service. And this is really it. This is the, the beginning of the journey. But by no means is this the extent of what you're going to experience. They, they, they're getting a glimpse right now how tough it is to be in a Firefighter One Academy or in a, a, a recruit academy that most of the other agencies, whether it's the Richmond Fire Department, the Oakland Fire Department, Alameda County, um, and trust me, some of those agencies are normally here at this graduation because they're trying to eyeball them like draft picks. Um, but I'm doing my best to put the blocks on and, and see what I can do to bring some of these individuals to Oakland, uh, if not all of them at some point. But that being said, um, it, it's important for each of them to understand moving forward what it means to be a firefighter, what it means to be a fire service professional, and more importantly, what it means to be a civil servant. And so I joined the fire service not fully understanding civil service and what, um, what that entailed. And that's partly because I started at the airport, as was shared earlier, and it's partly because I didn't have the benefit of being out in the community, being isolated at the airport station. 
but as I joined the Oakland Fire Department, and don't get me wrong, I participated in career days and I did some other activities where I was out and engaged in the community from the airport fire department, but it wasn't until I joined the Oakland Fire Department and had a chance to work alongside the men and women of this organization and be directly in the community on a widespread basis, whether it was in the hills, whether it was downtown, whether it was in West Oakland, any number of types of responses, any number of community um, engagement opportunities, whether it was a public education opportunity, you name it. It wasn't until I got the position in the city doing structural firefighting that I understood how important the position of a firefighter was or working in the fire service as a career was. And so for them, they're learning firsthand some of the lessons from them. But I just want to share a couple of things with you from my own personal perspective. One, if you're serving Oakland or some similar community, understand full well you're there to make a difference every single shift, on and off duty. It's your charge, it's your responsibility. When you take that oath, you have an obligation to help others in need. You have an obligation to give them your best possible interaction that they could hope to experience from a fire service professional. And that's true whether it's somebody you've been on 100 times in the course of a month or two, as opposed to the individual that you may never see again in life. They're gonna remember their interaction with you and they'll be better for it, provided you give them the best possible face and experience they could hope for. That's your responsibility. You will be selected to join an organization with the goal of doing your absolute best and being civic oriented. And so don't lose sight of that. The second thing I'm gonna share with you is the importance of continuing to learn. Um, when I left the, uh, the airport fire department and joined the structural fire department, um, the real meat and potatoes of what we do, if you will, there was an endless opportunity of things for me to be able to learn, whether it was hazardous materials, whether it was how to work on a truck company with some of the best truck individuals that I had had the experience of working under, whether it was working with disciplined lieutenants, captains, senior firefighters who were all knowledgeable and wanted to share and teach. You should be there, eyes open, mouth closed, and learning. And the only time you open your mouth is to ask a question because you want to learn, and they will appreciate that mindset that you have because when you come in, trust me, there's so much that you don't know, you, will, you don't even scratch the surface in the cadet program and you don't even scratch the surface when you, hold, when you go through a recruit academy. You don't touch the surface, you're just getting basic fundamental things. So be a lifelong learner in the profession. If you ever get to a point where you feel like you know as much as you need to know and you're not interested, that's when you know it's time for you to step on and do something else in life because this is a, a career and a profession that's constantly evolving, and it's evolving even faster than it is when I came in 20 years ago to the Oakland Fire Department. That being said, it's filled with many great opportunities, so be excited at those opportunities. Embrace those opportunities to become better individuals and become better at your craft, whatever that um, specialty that you decide or whatever it is you do fundamentally as a fire service professional. And I guess the last thing I'm gonna share with you right now is and it's, it's something I reiterated earlier in the conversation, but this community, this society, this country, we need individuals who know how to get along with one another. We need individuals who understand and embrace diversity. We need individuals who understand and know the importance full well of being able to reach somebody at their worst moment, even in, when there's maybe a language or a cultural barrier or some other unfamiliarity, you have to make not only daily with your work environment, but with those that you serve, you have to make that effort to do everything to be all you can to be receptive to something different than you. We all grow up in a different, um, how should I say, a different set of values, a different household, a different approach to the way we do things, but you have to be tolerant, you have to embrace, and you have to appreciate the differences. And so we're fortunate in Oakland. We have a very diverse organization, and with that diversity comes a great different set of ideas, a great different set of, of approaches to how we view things and how we do things. But the end result is we all come together as a team during the emergency and even after the emergency to gel as a unit. And so you've seen that with the cadre. You're going to see that with one another because you guys have all formed bonds here. But when you, when you join your organization, you're going to establish those similar bonds with the crew that you work with. And so. Uh, it, it goes without saying how important it is to be ready to be open to other things other than what maybe you perceive them to be, but at the same time, understand this is an opportunity and take it and take full advantage of it. Um, I could go on and on. You know, sometimes, and I always joke about this, 
that at times I'm a man of few words and at times I'm a man of many. And there's so much that I could share with them and I'm sure most of it's already been shared by the cadre, but I have to reiterate some of those things that I'm sure you've already heard because it's still important to me, it's dear to me. And as a individual who's, who's now leading the organization, I know what I look for in recruits. I know what I look for in individuals I want to serve the community while I'm here and even after I retire because who knows, one day you may be coming to my home for some reason. And I want to make sure I have the right individuals coming to my house to deliver the service that I'm hopeful that I'll be able to receive. And so if I can contribute to that to, in any small way to make sure not only me, but my friends, my community members get the best possible service, that's what I'm going to leave you with today. Give your best. And so congratulations to each one of you. And thank you all for being here. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Engineer Aaron Brown. I'm uh, greatly honored and privileged to be here and to be able to present these certificates of 18 weeks of hard work. The class started off with uh, quite a few more than 17, so they're a testament of hard work and perseverance, and I want to say thank you for all your work. So once you get your certificate, you can just stand over here with your new family, all right? Your additional family. First person, Christian Andrews. <laughs> Dominic Barnes. Tommy Ocho. Robert Fernand. Anthony Ferraris. Brandon Harris. Craig Hillier III. <laughs> Ariana Isolani. Brian Johnson. Uh, now we have two brothers in this class. We'll be brothers from here on out. First one, Donovan Jones. And the second brother, Paul Jones. <laughs> Next up, Joe McKay. Next brother up, I have a special affection for because I've seen him 
persevere more than anybody else that I've seen in many years. This brother came back to complete this. So it's a testament of hard work and perseverance. Lorenzo Newell. Next up, Philip Parker. Last but definitely not least, Eduardo Vargas. So while they're on the way back, um, I do want to comment and just, this is a partial group of our alumni that showed up in support. As you can tell, um, we still have alumni that are currently in the hiring processes for a lot of different departments, but then we also have some of our alumni that are, have been hired. So I definitely want to give them a hand. very integral part of coming out and helping us with their training. They still come out not only to keep their skills sharpened and keep them in the game and keep them in the mix, but uh, they also come out, you know, in support of each other, I have different events, community events still. So I definitely want to say thank you to all of you guys for their continued support. They could have gotten hired and walked off and never thought about us again, but yet they still come back and they give back because that's what Bay MT is all about. So thank you. All right, so we have a few awards to give out tonight. The cadets have worked very, very hard and we feel it's only fitting to reward a job well done. That's where the Firefighter One certificates come in, and that's it. <laughs> no, I just All right, no. All right, so along with that, we want to recognize a few individuals that have uh, gone above and beyond in the academy. Um, we only have four awards, but honestly, this year, it was a challenge to make the decisions. So um, I don't want anybody to get their feelings hurt or anything, because this was tough. This was tough on us. And um, for whatever reasons, uh, we chose the people that we chose, but it's to say that, I mean, there are a lot of, there were a lot of challenges in, in all these categories. So that's the kudos to you guys. So thank you so much for being a, a good, dedicating your time and effort and working really hard. It's what we wanted from you, okay? 
All right, so the award that we have, the four awards, the highest, av the highest academic average, we have an award for the best skills performer in the yard, the most growth award, and the best all-around performer. That would be our valedictorian. So I want to start off with the highest academic award. This award is given to the person with the highest academic average, the entire academy. That encompasses all the quizzes, which for the first month and a half, we had one every class. Every time we came to class, you had a quiz, as soon as you walked in the door. And we've had three exams along the way. So with putting all those averages together to get the cadet that had the highest score will get this award. Um, the cadet will receive a plaque uh, and will also put their name on our uh, perpetual plaque so we can have it every year we have the highest grade point average. So I'm very proud to present the 2018 award with an academic average of 94.5 to Ariana Isolano. Thank you. That's a lot of hard work. That's over on about 40 different tests and quizzes, and that's a lot. But we had averages of 93, 92, 90, 91, 88. I mean, this was a pretty competitive class, so I just want hard work on everybody's part. Thank you. So. So this next award is the best skills performer. This award goes to the, perform the person that uh, demonstrated great, great competency and skill in manipulative drills in the, on the training grounds, from hose evolutions to ladder evolutions, down in SCBA, morning checks on power tools, uh, also showed good teamwork and excellent work ethic. This is a perpetual plaque that, we, that their name will be added to also, and they'll be also given an individual plaque. This was probably the toughest award to give, um, because there was about five people that could have easily have gotten this. Um, and asking us, the cadre, even asking some of the alumni, you know, I, hell, I even asked some of the cadets who they thought was the best performer in their class. Um, and everybody had, I mean, it was a, a good variety. So I, I can't help but say, don't get feelings hurt, because it's, 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 this is a hard one, like picking your favorite kid. It's tough. <laughs> All right, so, uh, but I'm very proud to present this award. They're my favorite kids now. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. I'm very, pr very proud to present this 2018 Best Skills Performer, Craig Hilliard. job. Very nice job. That was a tough one. All right, so this is one of my favorites. The Most Growth Award. The Most Growth Award is exactly what it sounds like. It's an award that serves the purpose of reward the cadet that the cadre feels has grown the most throughout the academy. Changes for the better. We actually had uh, more than a few people in the running for this award, but we noticed better attitude, more leadership taking place, uh, teamwork slowly but surely evolving, even when the cadets had, had uh, constructive criticism, it was a yes sir, no sir, with a smile, all right? If they did talk about us, it was out on the other side of the gate after we left. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that happened, but that's cool. Um, this went to an individual that uh, came in in the beginning and um, was challenged from the first week, from the very first week. Should I say orientation? No. <laughs> but persevered, persevered 18 weeks, 18 weeks. And I, hey, and I, I, this, was, this was a no-brainer. This was pretty easy. So the sixth annual growth award goes to a young man 
that the cadre felt unanimously deserved it, and that's Jomo K. about to throw you out there now, Joe Mo. So, first week, <laughs> the first Saturday, three days into the academy, Joe Mo almost passed out. I mean, literally almost passed out. It was like, uh-oh. <laughs> but since then, he'd worked extremely hard. Joe Mo, how much weight did you lose total? 25. It was up to 27, I thought. But uh, he, he put two on the last couple weeks because we've been, we've been testing. <laughs> but he lost 25 pounds in the academy. Total 27, so I just told you. All right, so the best all around candidate, our valedictorian. This award is self explanatory. This goes to the cadet that was best in, one of the best in skills and had one of the best academic performances also. We averaged them together. He had the third highest grade point average. It was in the top three in the class in, uh, in the yard in, in training. So it was kind of, it was close, but then it was, it was a conversation. Then ultimately, this individual was uh, the person that the majority of everyone selected. This person maintained a positive attitude, showed good leadership skills, showed great initiative throughout the academy. This person worked very, very, very hard. There was no quit, and that's exactly what we want. So I'm proud to give this best all-around award to our 2018 valedictorian, Anthony Ferraris. Extremely honored. I've never received anything like this ever before in my life, so this is very huge. I uh, first want to start off. I want to thank Mary College for having us here tonight and also having this program. And uh, I wanted to thank my my family, my friends that are all here tonight. Um, my mother, who showed me that with hard work you can make a career change while having a family. She was able to do it age 46, and uh, that's what I'm doing for my family today. I also want to thank my beautiful wife, Kristen. Um, you're my absolute everything. You know, without you, I would not be able to do this. These past four and a half months, have, I, you have sacrificed so much for me, and you're the whole reason why I'm here. And, uh, you know, I really can't thank you enough for letting the child inside of me live out and pursue his dream and becoming a firefighter. I want to thank or I want to say I love you to my, my children. Camilla and Cooper are also here as well. You know, they're the main reason I'm on this journey. Um, and then I also want to thank everyone in the crowd. You know, all the families that are here tonight, you guys are, who had to endure the academy with all the cadets. So to Captain Gasse, I remember the first time I met you, sir, uh, was the interview to get into Bay MT. And it was an extremely intimidating experience for me. <laughs> I remember you, uh, you had a very stone cold look on your face with the toothpick hanging out of your mouth. <laughs> and you, you asked me why I wanted to be a part of this program, why I wanted to be a firefighter. And I just was so nervous I did not want to say the wrong thing. You've been a bright light for me over this past year. And um, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. Uh, you know, the day at orientation when you were you were speaking, you really touched me. You, you were basically talking about, I felt like you were telling my story when you were talking about not having a backup plan, and that's why I'm here. You know, you've, what you and Firefighter Jackson have put here together is changing every, people's lives, you know, young men and women in their families' lives. I'm so blessed to be a part of this, so I thank you so much, sir.
to Firefighter Jackson. You know, I, I really want to thank you for this tremendous opportunity as well. I have so much respect for you, sir, and your message, and I promise it's not falling on deaf ears. You know, you are a vital part in molding us into honorable young men and women, and I'm just thanking you so much for your knowledge and your, your time and experience, sir. Thank you. Next, I, want, I wanted to thank the cadre, the ones that are here and are not here as well. Investigator Smith, Engineer Brown, Lieutenant Hughes, and uh, Mr. Bowman somewhere in the back as well. You know, you guys took time away from your lives and families to come educate us. That's something extremely selfless. And uh, you are great examples of what we're trying to become, so thank you all. And that I wanted to thank the alumni who played a huge role in our development of growth and experience throughout this process. You guys are great examples of how we should conduct ourselves as alumni and how we should give back to this, this beautiful program as well. So thank you all. I also wanted to thank the Oakland Fire Department as well for letting us use their, their training grounds and equipment. And also Chief White, thank you. Um, and all the firefighters who came down and helped spend time with us and, you know, were a part of our journey as well. So thank you, thank you, Oakland Fire Department. And I also wanted to thank Alameda County Fire Department as well for, um, for educating us and sharing their time with us during our hazmat wildland, wildland weeks. So thank you. Finally, to my fellow cadets, you know, I would not be here without you guys either. I would not have made it through this program without you guys. You know, over the past four and a half months, I've really gotten to know each and every one, each and every one of you and made strong bonds. And I'm truly grateful that we all got to walk through this experience together. And I'm so proud to call you all my brothers and sisters. So thank you guys. This academy for me was one of the most mentally, physically, and challenging things I've ever done. Um, while working a full-time job, having to support my family, and having a, my second child, Cooper, halfway through this academy definitely added to the stress. Um, at times, it was extremely uncomfortable for me, like getting in front up, in, up in front of the class and belting out Return of the Mac, or when I was uh, doing my standpipe evolution, trying to tie my knots in as quick as I could, and having Firefighter Jackson over my shoulder, shaking his head in disgust that I wasn't going quick enough. <laughs> but those were the moments that really I grew from because I remember going home and practicing my knots on my daughter's play structure while she'd be playing on it for hours and begging my wife to come out and uh, time me just to make sure I was getting faster. You know, that's what this experience really was for me. It really was a growing experience. I felt like every day I gave 100% everything I could and I tried to make myself accountable uh, not only for myself but for you guys as well until you would never have to worry about me. You know I get I fed off a lot of energy from you guys and I feel like you guys inspired me every day. Times like watching Isolani, uh, Cadet Isolani and Cadet Robertson do 22 foot single person ladder throws or watching Rawlings and Hilliard do their hose evolutions you know that really gave me a lot of energy the night we were all cheering on Cadet Newell and Cadet Vega doing the schoolyard, we were cheering, I'm sorry, cheering them on, and also cheering on uh, Cadet K trying to get that last final push up in for Lieutenant Evans. Moments like those I'm gonna remember throughout this whole experience. And uh, in closing, I just wanna challenge all of you. Let's keep pursuing this dream that has brought us all here together. You know this common goal that we're all trying to achieve of becoming firefighters. And as we go on to our careers one day, let's not us, let us not forget our roots here at Bay MT and give back our time and our experience to the future class. So I thank you all for this, this opportunity and I thank you guys very much as well, thank you. It's not over. Well, this is gonna be over, but this is not over. You as families, friends, they have, they have a lot more work to do. The testing process starts, right? Recruit academies. Um, they're going to continue grinding this out. And uh, this is 
a milestone, it's a big hurdle, but there's more to come. So please, we beg for your continued support and your love and your uh, guidance. Uh, they're gonna continue to need it. But as you can see, they will not disappoint you. They will not disappoint you. They're committed. So, uh, hold on, I just got yelled at by the captain. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> there's, there's, some, there's some snacks in the back that you must consume before you leave. <laughs> so to, to do that. Um, before I present to you the graduating class of the 2018 uh, Merritt College Fire for One Academy, cadets, please rise. Yes, to take us out of here, give them the mission statement.